Guys, it's okay to be frugal. I'm frugal, but I also realize that cheap things can cost you more money down the road. So I like to be frugal, but I'm careful to not cut corners in every area of my life in terms of what I buy. So on this video, I wanna give you eight things that are important to me to no longer buy cheap. Now listen, if you buy these things cheap, I'm cool with it, right? That's on you. But for me, these are things that I'm not gonna buy cheap anymore. And for each one, I'm gonna explain exactly why. And I think you'll be able to relate to some of these, if not all of them. And if you agree with them, or you have something that I didn't mention that you refuse to go cheap on anymore, let me know that in the comments section below. Now, let's just jump right into it. The very first thing that I refuse to no longer buy cheap is food. Now, I don't like to skimp on food. I'm a little bit of a snob when it comes to eating healthy and eating quality food that's good for my health. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? I'm not perfect with this thing. I like my chips, I like my cookies, right? I like cakes and pies and all that good stuff too. But I try to do my best to eat healthy as much as possible. And I don't mind spending good money on quality food. Look, we get one physical body. That's all we get, it's just one. And so why not take care of that? So I'll spend large amounts of money on quality food. Because I look at food as sort of a medicine, right? I look at my kitchen the same way I look at a medicine cabinet. In my opinion, they're the same thing. So I'm going to spend some good money on good medicine, which in turn really is good money on good food. Now, the second thing that I no longer buy cheap is shoes. Look, if I'm going to be on my feet, I want to be comfortable on my feet, right? There are so many problems that can go wrong from cheap shoes or wearing cheap shoes. We're talking ankles, hips, knees, back, right? I already have a knee problem, so I don't wanna make that knee problem any worse. So I try to get good quality shoes. Now I'm not saying you gotta have the most expensive gym shoes. I'm saying that just when it comes to casual shoes, everyday shoes, right, they're quality, right? I don't mind good quality shoes and I don't mind paying for them because there's just too much wrapped up into my feet, my legs, my knees, my ankles, my hips, my back, right? I got too much wrapped into that that I wanna keep right, so I'm gonna pay for good quality shoes because I feel like, hey, my feet are a priority and shoes made with quality materials, they tend to last longer. And especially the fact, guys, that I'm getting a little older and when you get a little older, you wanna have some quality on your feet and you realize the incredible value of feet that don't hurt. And you realize the value of pain and injuries, right? So I don't wanna be anywhere near pain and injury. So I don't skimp, I don't go cheap when it comes to shoes. Now the third thing that I refuse to buy cheap anymore is a mattress. Hey, everything that I said about my feet, ditto that same thing about my back. Look, eight hours a day is one third of the day. If you live to be 75 years old, you're gonna spend about 25 years of that 75 years in the bed. That's a long time. You might as well be laying and sleeping on quality mattresses instead of something cheap. And I get it guys, mattresses can be expensive. So it's easy to go for the cheap option or the cheaper option, but look, that extra $300, extra $500 that you spend on a good mattress, it could make the difference in a, when you have a bad back. It could make the difference in making sure you, you don't get stiff or you don't wake up with a bad lower back. It makes a tremendous difference. And listen, in my opinion, it's worth it. I'm going to spend a little extra money for a good solid mattress that's not cheap. Look, it's worth it. Better sleep, better back, better spine, better neck. I'll take it. I'll spend the extra $500, $1,000, whatever it is, to have that quality mattress. Because a quality mattress is gonna help lead to quality sleep. And again, that's worth the money to me. Hey guys, if you get anything out of the video, share this video with someone who you know. Also, smash the like button, and please don't forget to drop that comment. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. All right, let's get back to the video. Now, the fourth thing that I'm no longer willing to go cheap on is a gym membership. Look, when I was younger, guys, all I needed was a, a dumbbell. I could take a gallon of milk and work out with it, right? But as I get older, I find that the motivation to go work out ain't there like it was when I was younger. So the gym membership for me is more of a motivator more of an encourager, right? When I, it got the variety of machines that I can use, you got the track, 
that I can walk on, you got the swimming pool, you got all these other amenities that I can partake in in an atmosphere, an environment where everybody else is partaking. So the atmosphere helps me out. Look, a good gym membership, if you use it enough, is well worth the price of $40 a month, $80 a month, whatever you may spend on it. To me, it's worth it. And yeah, you don't need a gym to work out, right? You can do squats, push-ups, sit-ups, have a set of dumbbells. You can do a lot of things without having a gym membership, right? You can walk outside every day. But the point is, is that sometimes it's cold outside. And if you go to a gym, they still have a track. Sometimes it's cold outside, but if you go to a gym, they still have a swimming pool sometimes, right? So there's all these other amenities. And I think, in my opinion, not something I want to skimp on. I want the amenities and all the extra machinery and equipment that a gym offers. And it's good money for the 50, 60, 80 bucks that you spend every single month using it. If you use it, you got to use it. But that's an area I don't want to skimp on anymore. And by the way, you only need one gym membership, right? You're only one person. You don't need three and four different gym memberships in different gyms. And yet people do that, right? You don't need it. That's overboard in my opinion. One gym membership that's got everything you need in it, it's money well spent. Now the fifth thing that I no longer go cheap on is simply soaps and toiletries and things like that. Look, comfort is the name of the game as you get a little older. Now I'm not saying everything has to be super duper expensive, right? Top of the line soap, top of the line every, no, it doesn't have to be that way. But I'm pretty picky. I'm one of those picky people that actually read the labels on toiletries, right? Things that I buy to clean with and all that good stuff. I read the labels, call me a nerd, but I like to buy things that really are friendly to my face, friendly to my skin in general, right? Friendly to my hands, right? There's a lot of chemicals and poisons in stuff that we just assume is safe, but it's not necessarily safe. So I like to buy quality products in terms of toiletries, cleaning supplies, toilet paper, and paper towels. Anything that's touching my skin, I want it to be quality. Don't have to be the highest quality, but it's got to be quality. And so I don't want to go cheap on that. Now, I don't want to sound like a snob or anything because, hey, I bargain shop for those things too, right? But I just don't want to go cheap on them anymore. Now, number six is this. The sixth thing that I no longer go cheap on is car tires, car brakes, and car repairs, right? Automobile repairs. And I don't go cheap on those things because those are safety issues. I don't want to get the cheapest brakes. When the time comes for me to have to replace my brakes, I don't want to get the absolute cheapest ones. I don't have to get the most expensive ones, right? Because my car that I drive is a 17-year-old car. It's got over 170,000 miles on it, but I like it. It runs well, but I'd still, even if it's 17 years old, I still don't want to get the absolute cheapest brakes, right? I don't want to get the absolute cheapest anything to go on the car. I don't want to get the cheapest tires. I don't want to get the absolute cheapest everything because it's a safety issue for me. I already have an older car, so let's keep it up in terms of maintenance as good as possible. Give me the middle. Don't give me the cheapest. I don't have to have the expensive, but give me the middle price, right? Because I want some quality and I don't want the cheapest. Now, the seventh thing that I no longer go cheap on is knives and pots and pans. I put them together because it's all kitchen stuff. But man, have you ever been trying to cut something with a cheap knife? We eat a lot of fruits and a lot of vegetables and things you gotta cut, right? Onions and ginger and you're cutting. If you got a cheap knife that doesn't have any bite to it and it's not sharp, it ain't fun cutting vegetables. I'm just being honest. It ain't fun cutting fruit. And I think some of you can relate to what I'm saying. Even with pots and pans, guys, I don't want the absolute cheapest pots and pans that, you know, they got the Teflon, but it's going to peel off. And next thing you know, you're wondering to yourself, is this stuff getting in my food, right? These poisons and stuff that's peeling off the bottom of the pot and pan. I don't want that. I want to get quality pots and pans. I don't have to have the most highest quality uh, cup to drink out of, right? But when it comes to cooking food and heating up food, I want to be careful. I want the best, right? I want to get near the best when it comes to pots and pans and sharp knives that work. Now, finally, number eight is this. I no longer want to go cheap on books. Believe it or not, guys, 
I like to read and I like hard copy books, right? And so sometimes, guys, you can get the cheap version of books and you can get them in paperback, but I like the hardback versions still where I can take the cover off, put the cover to the side somewhere safe, and I can take the book and read it over the course of two, three weeks or a month, whatever it takes to finish the book, right? So I like quality books. I don't want to go cheap on books because I don't want to have a paperback book that I read and I read and next thing you know by the time I'm done reading it it's all ripped up and torn up or the cover is curled in and, and not looking like it's supposed to look when it sits on the shelf. I like to have good solid books and I like books that are typically hardback. Now you look behind me you say well all those aren't hard hardback. Most of them aren't hardback but my real book collection it's mostly hardback. It's what I like and I prefer. I no longer want to go cheap on books and I won't overthink it to spend $75, $100 on a good solid book. Maybe it's a classic or maybe it's something that's rare or maybe out of print, whatever it may be. I don't mind paying good money for good quality books because I know they'll be around for a long time. So hey guys, those are the eight things that I no longer want to go cheap on. Remember, let me know in the comments below, what are some things that you refuse to go cheap on anymore? Be sure to smash the like button for me, guys, and share this video. Now, if you're on a tight budget and you want to know five frugal living tips that I do to spend less money so that I can actually save more money, you need to check out this video right here next. Peace.